when the Lakers are 2-0 and because it is just a preseason game. But that was a really fun preseason game. 131 points the Lakers scored. 18 of 25 from three is just ridiculous. It's 72%. 28 assists. Without LeBron and AD, a lot of chemistry showing early, especially on the offensive end. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, for the new guys that have arrived, um, you know, it's, it's an it's a early snapshot. But, I, I, you know, it's the, the, this fresh out of the bubble, a couple months off, it seems like uh, they're, they're right back in the, in the mix. I mean, um, to not have LeBron and AD, uh, the, the chemistry is good. You bring in some veteran players, uh, Marc Gasol. Uh, I mean, he's like Tom Brady. You know, he's, he's like his brother was. He's, he's an assist center. He's a trigger man. When he gets it at the top of the key, a lot of things can happen. And, of course, uh, you know, the continuation of, of Tucker. Uh, I, I just like what I see in the team. They have bought into it. Uh, they're talking to one another. They're building something early. So even though it's a preseason game, uh, you know, there's, there's a strong message being sent that they, you know, they're, they're going to be tough to deal with. Uh, to me, this, is, this shows the importance of having franchise players that take their job seriously, right? Like, like if LeBron trains and prepares himself for every season the way that he does and sets the example of performing at an elite level year in and year out, leading his team to the finals year in and year out, Anthony Davis joins the team. He understands coming to the Lakers, that's a part of the history, the tradition. Number 23 works that way. I got to work that way, too. Every person on this team understands that. To me, THT's performance is indicative of the culture that is, is, is back now where when you're on this team, there's just a certain mentality that you bring. Everybody's serious. They're working hard. They're sharing the basketball. There's not a lot of antics and crazy stuff going on. Like, they look like they are intentional about being successful. It's the preseason, so the stats, we can throw that in and out of the window and talk about it all day. But there's a, there's a look in the eye that these guys are intentional about doing what they're doing. And that's what you want to see, even though it's the preseason. The guy we all want to talk about, that you just mentioned, Fish. They just showed you some highlights. There are his numbers. THT. Kalen Horton Tucker, the second year guard, went for 33 big game James tonight. He went for 19 on Friday. He's averaging over 25 in the preseason. He was 11 to 17, four or five from three. But what about the 10 rebounds, the four steals, and also the free throws? Seven of nine. He plays hard, he plays defense, uh, he's got confidence. We heard about him a lot during the summer when they got to the bubble from Frank Vogel. LeBron tweeting, this kid is the real deal. He's special. Uh, big game, James. It's a lot of fun watching him. And on a night where there's Sunday night football, uh, Laker fans are so great. THT is, is trending. <laughs> People love him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Iowa State, second draft pick. Um, you know, there's always a player like, like this that comes along. You know, Fish was kind of like that. Came in, not really know what the expectations are. Uh, I had a, a kid out of my young, out of my hometown, Sleepy Floyd. People won't remember. That's a long time ago. But I do. You know, guys who you know they have the talent. They haven't been recognized. They've had to work on some stuff. You know, and 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 they never stop working. I mean, this kid right here has the prototype body for the game. I mean, uh, and he has arrived, like Fish said, on a team where, you know, the, 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 they monitor each other constructively, and he's learning from that. I mean, he's, I, mean I, I can't say enough about him, Geeter. I just can't wait to watch when the season starts. He does it all on the basketball court. He shoots the three. I didn't think he had that in him defensively. The extra length, when he reaches in, he had that steal against Kawhi. That never really happened. So, uh, I mean, he's still got a lot to show us on the defensive end, but I tell you what, man, he's got a world of talent, world of talent. Fish, I want to ask you a question. I want you to give us a different perspective, maybe from a from a coach's side or or, or, or a guy that plays in the league and, and there are people where everyone looks and says, that kid's special. But there's also people where the NBA fans, they go crazy about their guy during a preseason game and then nothing. When do you know a guy's got something and what do you see from THT? Uh, yeah, it's hard to say in, a, in game situations and in the preseason. I, I think the comments from teammates and coaches – I, that's a, that tells that's, you a little more. That tells me a little more, mm -hmm. right? Like 30 points in a preseason game, if you're playing 30-plus minutes, 
everybody in the NBA can play. So I, I don't want to get hype on the stats. But when you hear his teammates are not just hyping him up <laughs> and he yeah. can't back it and up. And Kawhi's asking Wes Matthews, right, you know how old he is? Yeah. His coach is not talking about him in this way, you know, and it's just noise. Like, this young man can really play basketball. And I think it's catching everybody off guard because we didn't get to see him a lot last year. So it's, it's like he's coming out of nowhere. But I'll go back to what I said earlier. Like, this dude worked. <laughs> yeah. And in the, in the, in the, the offseason was different, right? Like, the season got disrupted in March. He worked. So that three- yeah. or four-month period, he worked. And it showed in the bubble when he did get minutes, mm -hmm. right? Now we've had a, few, a couple more months, and he has still been working and is showing. Yeah, I'm glad you share that perspective because James kind of gave me the idea. We were watching the end of this game. And he just looked at me and said, from where he is right now, he's all, this isn't a fluke, Geeter. No. <laughs> like, you're, you're, I mean, you, you know, you guys watch a lot of guys, and you're like, this guy could play. Yeah. Yeah, fluke is every now and then. Yeah. This is consistency. And, you know, we're seeing, you know, him excel. But this is not the first time we've seen him. We saw flashes and glimpses of him when he got in the game. I think he overcame a foot injury, I think, Geeter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he had to overcome that, kind of slow him down a little bit, but. This is, this is a wicked talent right here, man. Maybe a late bloomer uh, that, you know, didn't recognize him that much in college. You know, he wasn't a, a big-time score or outstanding. But sometimes these guys just keep the grind going. And they know in their head that they can play. They just keep grinding and keep grinding. And now his hard work has played off. Yeah, Laker team's so deep, he's trying to make the rotation. Who knows? <laughs> it looks good so far. Let's go back to Mike Trudell at Staples Center. He's joined by Marcus Gasol. All right, Marcus Gasol, make your debut here in Lakers purple and gold. And notice just a lot of the actions where you were at the top of the key, picking guys out with a pass. How much were you able to work on that kind of stuff in practice? Because I know it's a big part of your game, but how um, were you able to implement it so soon? Well, guys, just, you know, coach made an emphasis before the game uh, saying try to execute that um, in the first half. Uh, and, and guys got comfortable with it. Um, and, and we were getting good shots as, a, as an up. And so, uh, you know, that was pretty good. Mark, I want to zoom out for a second. Uh, what's it like uh, playing in this atmosphere without the fans, but uh, in the arena, uh, in Staples Center, wearing the jerseys? What was this atmosphere like for you? Um, obviously, fans are a huge part of, uh, of the game. Um, you know, we miss them dearly. Um, hope to see them soon uh, at Staples. Uh, but it's uh, for me, it's good to to be at a, at a you know real NBA arena uh, with the spacing and and uh, you know and and uh, it's a little closer to to regular games. It's not. Uh, all the way there yet because we is a huge part uh, without our fans but uh, but it's better than the bubble for sure mark i wanted to ask you about Taylor horton tucker the 20 year old uh, how he played tonight and the recipient of some of those passes what did you make of the kid um i, I like how uh, decisive he is he plays downhill um you know tries to get to the paint and attack he has a variety of ways uh finishing around the rim good finisher great reader um with the ball without the ball um and I love how defensively, how tenacious he is. He's, he competes every possession defensively, um, very um, open to listening, and, uh, and, and a great, great kid. I mean, uh, I, I didn't know that much about him, um, but I'm, I'm very surprised and, 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 and very positively surprised uh, after watching him play for, for a week now. And last thing for you, you guys, of course, play tonight without LeBron, without AD. Still play pretty well, Mark. Hit a lot of threes, uh, make a lot of plays. How do you expect to integrate those two uh, into the lineup and as you guys get ready for the regular season, which is, you know, uh, coming up pretty quick here? Yeah, it's, it's different different players, uh, you know, with uh, a lot of attributes, a lot of uh, different ways of scoring. Uh, they're going to be, obviously, our main uh, focal point uh, of the offense. And, and then we're going to have to play without the ball and do the movement. And, and But, you know, I think it's it's always great to, you know, to have the full team just to get used to each other uh, out there. Mark, thanks for the time. It's nice to see you in purple and gold. Thank you so much. Thanks. Lakers go to 2-0 in the preseason without LeBron and AD. THT, he's leading the way with 33 on 4 of 5. He also had 10 rebounds. Kuz, 25, 4 of 7 from 3. That's a great sign. Now Montrez Harrell doing work against his former team. Double-double at 19 and 11. Let's hear from Frank Vogel. He's speaking with Mike in the media over Zoom. Hey, Frank, it's going to be a broken record from last game and ask you about Taylor Horton Tucker first again, just off that performance. You mentioned how good he looked in camp, and I know you had confidence in him going back to the bubble, uh, but, but did you expect to see him have this kind of control of an offense like this tonight? 
Yeah, you know, I wasn't sure what to expect with him uh, playing point guard for us uh, as much as he did tonight. Um, but he did that some in the G League last year, looked really comfortable with that. But more importantly, he just showed more of, of what we've what we've seen from him, you know, since we've been watching him, you know, in the G League first season and in the bubble. Uh, just his, his ability to attack offensively in a variety of different ways, uh, attacking the basket with great finishing ability, uh, making good decisions uh, with his paint to great, shooting the three ball well. And, um, you know, he had a strong defense tonight as well. So, you know, I knew he was going to play big minutes and not really surprised uh, at the numbers that he put up. You mentioned Marcus all before the game, Frank, and how you're looking forward to seeing him integrated on the offense. Uh, he had five assists and just a lot of really nice passes. Uh, how, how were you able to, to get that together this quickly with new players and uh, just lean on that skill set that seems like it'll be able to stick? Well, it's, uh, you know, I think NBA players or basketball players in general, when they know they have a, a guy that's going to throw them the ball, uh, the, the, the cutting aggressiveness just picks up. And, um, you know, we came into this game knowing we we're going to play through uh, Mark a lot at the top of the key. Uh, our guys had a, a great mindset to, to really move aggressively without the basketball. And then Mark would find you, especially uh, in the paint. And, um, you know, we got a lot of great paint catches that some led to layups, some led to uh, paint to great situations. Um, and, you know, Mark gives us that, that dynamic. You know, it's just going to make us that more difficult, difficult to guard. Dave? Frank, what's going to be the key to translating uh, Taylor or Tucker's production from giving him 41 minutes and giving him the ball and, and saying, hey, we're missing a bunch of the guys tonight, the resting, have at it, to potentially finding a role where it's however many minutes off, off the bench or whatever and trying to still have that type of confidence and production? Yeah, it's, it's going to be. It's going to make my job difficult for sure because we have a we have a very deep team, you know, and uh, you know no minutes are guaranteed. So you know he's going to keep playing at a high level. That should push everybody else to to stay playing at a high level. And um, but like you said, it does give us that that luxury of uh, helping you know having him carry the load some for some of our guys that, that played deep uh, in, into the championship run last year, had a short off season, and he should be able to carry some of that load. Hey Frank, can you give us any clarity as to why post this thing Devontae wants to do today? Yeah, due to the uh, the health and safety protocols of the league, uh, those guys had an excused absence from the game. How, how worrisome I guess it is that you know you played one game now and we had guys from both rosters that had to kind of not be here because of that. That's the that's the norm for uh, an NBA season outside the bubble. You know, this is what our we said an expectation for our team that it's going to be abnormal to be at full strength, staff and players, and there's going to be guys out a lot. And uh, you know, we all just got to get used to the fact that that's going to be normal for this this season league wide. And um, you know, hopefully, it's as minimal as possible. But um, you know, we just try to try to find the silver lining in it. Uh, when certain guys are, are going to be out, other guys are going to get uh, more opportunity, and, and you saw that with some of our guys tonight. Hey, Frank. Uh, along those same lines, um, considering you, know, you guys played the same team on Friday and practiced yesterday, was there any question about whether this game tonight would happen? Not really, uh, to me. Um, you know, I never felt like it wouldn't happen. You know, we uh, we knew we were going to be a little bit short-handed, but uh, you know, I never really felt like it wasn't going to happen. Kyle, uh, all right, just kind of looking ahead to Phoenix and the road environment. Um, are you guys even aware of you know what the procedures are going to be? How what kind of facilities you can use in that building, and how much? You already know how much we're still waiting to find out. Just a couple of days before that happens. <laughs> uh, well, um, it's one of those things where we've kind of heard what uh, what it may look like, but you know, until you get there and see it, you know, you kind of just have to figure it all out with your first trip. Uh, we're we're more familiar with uh, what the NBA protocols are, are going to be, but then adjusting from city to city, where each local uh, Department of Health 
we'll have different sets of rules. You know, that that's what's going to be a little bit of an adjustment for us is just trying to figure that out. Where are we going, and uh, you know, and you know, how bad is the is the virus and the pandemic in that in that spot, and what are what are their local restrictions? All right, that was Frank Vogel. Ali Clifton joins us. I want to get to some things with you first, but I want to also piggyback what Frank said. So, so let's start there. He was asked about Costas Antetokounmpo, Devontae Kaycock, and, and why they weren't there. And it comes down to the protocols um, and, and the roster and staffs of all these teams. It, it's going to be inconsistent throughout the season. And that's just the bottom line. We were even saying when we were watching that interview, uh, you're out of the bubble now. And this is just something, as we've seen in, in NFL and in college sports, that you're going to have to navigate. It, it's, it's going to be a different kind of year, a wild ride. It is, and I, it's really important not to assume things, mm -hmm. right? In this COVID kind of life experience, it's easy for us to assume, like a person just yeah. coughs or sneezes and everybody jumps to COVID. Yeah. Uh, in these situations, it's important not to assume um, <laughs> that it's COVID-related, right? The, there, there are a certain percentage of tests that are automatically going to be inconclusive, right? Which, when, when it's inconclusive, they have to treat it like a positive until they yeah. get further testing. So there are going to be a lot of these situations throughout a season that's going to last until June or July. So we should be prepared for some of these disruptions. Uh, and the Lakers are going to benefit because of the depth of their team. There's going to be a night where a guy has to miss for whatever reason. And they're going to have the depth and the talent to still go out and compete. Depth, key word, every team's going to need it. Lakers have it. It's going to be challenging outside of the bubble. I mean, the NBA did an excellent job of setting an example of how to play and succeed in the bubble. But also, it's, it's flu season. It's flu insulin. It's, you know, it's a lot going on. So uh, it's going to be very challenging outside the bubble. And they got to take care of themselves. And like, like Fish said, protocol is in play. I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, when it comes to this team, especially, you think back to a season ago, they prided themselves on depth. And they still had the 11th best bench in the NBA, just over 39 points. And now more than ever, you're going to need that on your side. Uh, and I think given the, the protocols, the circumstances, everything that we cannot control, that's one element. But when you watch these first two preseason games and you're without your two superstars, there's still a lot to be excited about with the Lakers and that potential and what they do have coming off the bench. Yeah, is that, that, you're, is that your problem? Your, when you watch these first two games, Allie, <laughs> Is that the pickup for you? I mean, listen, there's no AD, there's no LeBron, and guys are taking advantage of that. You know, and it goes back to what Fish started the show with. It just shows the intention, your word that you use, that is being set within this organization. Because I know a lot of times you can want to overlook the preseason and you want to just get to games that matter and times and moments that count. But there's a lot of guys on this roster right now that though Frank said at the beginning of it all, no one has to earn necessarily a job because they've got proven track records. You still have guys out there that are hustling, that are putting in the work. Um, guys like THT who, who's acting like he belongs and proving that he belongs. Yet a guy like Montrez Harrell that just won't quit continues to fight and show uh, what he can provide for this roster. And I just think that these are valuable times uh, that the Lakers are taking advantage of right now. It's a another, great, yeah, go ahead. Another go ahead. thing interesting too, I was thinking, normally you win the championship in mid-June. Your first preseason game is not until October. Yeah. And that's like four months and you, everybody's been telling you how great you are and it seems like an eternity when that preseason starts. Like, you barely can remember the end of the season. Buddy. In this short window, even though it's under really difficult circumstances, these guys still, like, remember what it felt like barely eight weeks ago to win a championship. And so they still, like, they still kind of have that residue of, like, no, 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 we... We still feel that. We're champs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we wanna, every time yeah. we step on the court, we want to put that out there. Yeah. We don't want to go through this like, oh, yeah, we, it's the preseason, so yeah. whatever. Not going like, on all it, the talk no, shows. It, it, and, it, yeah. it looks yeah. like they're serious right now. Yeah. And, and I know LeBron was texting a lot last year. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you they've already had a meeting of the minds and saying, look, we're doing it again this year. You can yeah. tell because they're already in, in, in a mode of saying, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make a statement. We're going to come out strong. And uh, I, this is serious. I think they've already said, look, we got to get another one this year. Two signs, LeBron, AD, plus what they brought in, looking very promising. Pass on Twitter, and Pau Gasol tweeted in response with the eyes emoji. <laughs> Does he have his eyes on the Lakers yeah. or his brother or? Yeah. Look, <laughs> Gasol, give and go. We see you, pal. <laughs> Brotherly love.
Brother Appreciate you watching, pal. Love. Right, Allie? Yep. Yep. You know what you're going to break down? A little Access 360? The Marcus All Pass. Oh. How's that, Allie, for a little? <laughs> it's all. Yep. Yeah. The Gasol give and go. Is that what we're doing? We're breaking that yeah. down? Are you going to the wall? We leave. Oh, you <laughs> going to the wall? <laughs> okay, you leave. I got to get now. I got to get away from the wall. So fish Oh, we not, nice, man. Six feet, fish. All right. Frank Vogel talked about this plan through Marcus Gasol. Talked about it at the high post, but here the low post look. This guy's seen all the reads, all the coverages. Watch the fake, boom, to draw this defender. Passer is a guy that observes on defense. We always talked about how he communicates. So he's a stabilizer, a great passer, and, and a guy that can, you know, bring the game back under control when needed. Fish, how impressive is it to see the maturation and just the way his game has changed from where he was earlier in his career? back to the basket, post up, and then all of a sudden he came back and he was shooting threes. I'm always so impressed with a guy that's able to change with the game. Yeah, I think I think Mark did a good job of stretching his game, mm -hmm. but he didn't lose who he is authentically, yeah. right? Like he's a, he's a rugged post player, mm -hmm. but he stretched his game a little bit by knocking down the three, uh, and, and instead of him viewing that as a weakness, right, uh, to, to acknowledge the fact that the game is evolving and changing and accepting that, embracing it, Shot 38.5% from the three last year. And in reality, what it does is it, it creates another opportunity for him to be a great passer, which is what he enjoys doing. Yeah. If he couldn't shoot the ball as well, uh, people could back off of him and take away some passing lanes. So uh, credit goes to, to Mark for evolving uh, as time goes on, why he still has tremendous value for this Lakers team. Impressive. Love that he's, uh, he's in a Lakers uniform. All right, more to come on 20. <laughs> no, you don't get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sticking that, man. You yes, got a chance to be on the highlights on the news. You're going to stick that one. Allie, you know what this is? Access THT postgame show. Yes. So we're going to do an Access 360 THT right now. How many times has Geeter said THT? So many. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Tweeted a it a bunch, too. I don't tweet during the yeah. preseason. I was tweeting tonight, Phil. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I mean, he deserves it. We should celebrate. Wall? <laughs> you on the wall? He's standing. <laughs> what happened to my voice right there? Like earlier when I Geets. choked on the break. You're still, yeah, still working in the newsroom. You're still working on during uh, halftime. No one cared. Your voice and everything my back. No, I don't, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go to the wall. Yeah, you're chill right there. Yeah, we yeah. have to limit some of our movement. Right, yeah. not too much moving around. Um, no, we can just break down THT without going to the wall. Um, what makes him really, really dangerous is his ability to get to the rim. So here he pushes Patrick Patterson back with the threat of getting to the rim. Pulls up to shoot the three. Dangerous if he can make that consistently, Geets. Here, Marcus All again at the top of the key. Mm. Great pass. Come on. Good cut by THT. Paint is wide open with the five out offense and Gasol at the top of the floor. And That's then here, angry. Rebounding himself, pushing. Speed, aggression, but under control what? enough to spin. What? Ron James moves. Off balance. Put the right kind of trajectory spin on the ball off the glass. Uh, so just a, just a good, solid basketball player, right? Not necessarily flashy, not going to do a lot of things that's going to blow you away other than the production, right, and consistent performance. And so, you know, we're hyping it up. It's a lot to see in the preseason. He won't play 40 minutes a lot during the regular season, but he's showing the things that you want to see for a player that can and probably will consistently get minutes. Fish, he's carrying the preseason. <laughs> it's what he's doing. And I remember the draft night a couple years ago, Ali, you had to go interview Rob over there. And we were like, wait, who they draft? We were trying to scramble. Yeah. And remember? How do you pronounce his name? Just yeah, to make we, sure I said it correctly? Yeah. Yeah. We know who THT is now. You know what? And I can't help but think, um, given all the intangibles, what we've talked about, and it's not just these first two preseason games, right? But you also think back to, as you mentioned, right at the top of the show, when he was thrown into the second round of the playoffs as a rookie, um, coming off having not played at all at that point, and what he was able to do. Can you help but not think, as former players, you guys often talk about who your vets were, who this individual is getting to learn from. He said it at the start of training camp. Last year in the bubble, being able to listen to a guy like Rajon Rondo, a guy like LeBron James. One of his coaches is one of the greatest point guards as well, Jason Kidd. And so having that understanding of the knowledge that he is able to absorb right now and learn and be humble with it, uh, it just makes his, his future that much brighter. Ali, you bring up a great point. James, he just turned 
20 years old. Is he going to do this every night? No, he's not Magic Johnson, but yeah. he doesn't need to do it every single night. But when you see the confidence that he has and who he's hanging around with and yeah. the journey he just went on with those guys, to be able cool. to, to be able to have those type of notes. LeBron, let me borrow your notes. Let me borrow your notes. <laughs> let me borrow your notes. That spin move right there, that was a LeBron, LeBron James move into the paint, spin, getting... You know, I was going to ask Fish, you know, obviously people recognize him. What's going to be his biggest challenge as teams start to know his his talents, take some of them away, the adjustments he'll have to make? What's what's going to be his biggest challenge there? Because they will try to take some of his stuff away and recognize him as a, as a, as a player they have to contend with. Yeah, I think, you know, once you're in the scouting report, <laughs> Things change, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. A lot of people didn't know how old he was. They didn't yeah. know his name. They didn't know anything about him until Friday night. Now everybody knows. I think the biggest challenge will be how do you do this in really short stretches, right? In the course of a 48-minute game, uh, he played 41 minutes tonight. In the regular season with their normal rotation, is he playing 16 minutes maybe, right? So how do you show production and efficiency in really short stretches, maybe six minutes, and then you're back off the floor. Mm -hmm. So mentally, how do you keep yourself ready to play and perform at a high level, even though you're only going to play five or six minutes at a time? Yeah, it's a bit tough. He's always going to be special to us because of what he's done for the preseason. He's made it fun. <laughs> Let's hear from the man of the hour. THT is now speaking with Mike in the media. Hey, Tim, I have a question I asked you say. You saw practice yesterday in July, came up to him on the court, and said, hey, Tim's only 19. He had to kind of correct him and said, now he just turned 20. Do you, do you get a kick out of it at all? Is he being kind of, you know, the young kid on this team, but clearly one who's gotten the respect of uh, the veterans at this point? Um, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, I, like I, you know, I always say, I look at it as a, just a blessing, you know. It's actually crazy, you know, I feel like, you know, what other 19, 20-year-old gets this experience in the world? Not, not too many, so just being able to, you know, take everything in and uh, just learn from it every day is good. And, yeah, just seeing, you know, other superstars, you know, kind of notices, it's actually pretty good. You know, Frank had mentioned this after game one, you had a good game, but your shot wasn't falling. What was different about tonight? Uh, how did you get in that rhythm and how did you build on that throughout the game? Uh, you know, tonight, I feel like tonight, tonight was really my like second game actually playing and getting a lot of minutes and, um, you know, getting those reps. Uh, so I just feel like, you know, being able to get that opportunity and being able to get into a rhythm early was uh, really important for me. So just being able to get that, you know, got me on to a pretty good start. Yeah. Hey, Tim. Um, I'm curious as to kind of how you envision your role on this team. Obviously, you know the players that are on this team, the vets that are on this team. Um, how do you think you can help, and, and how uh, how possible do you think a, a more expanded role is? Uh, I feel like you know just coming in with me, uh, using my you know my defensive instincts and being able to compete on a defensive end is going to be something that uh, you know helps me get on the court. So I feel like being in that role. Uh, you know, prepare me to, you know, to carry on a, a heavier offensive role, you know, for the near future. So just being able to, you know, get into, you know, a rhythm on defensive end is going to be able to, you know, get me going and probably help my role on this team. Can you repeat? I can do it. Which team is it really? Some of you two of somewhere between. I was curious if you could share some of what Brian and those guys were saying and telling you when you got hot there the second half, they were going pretty crazy on the bench. Uh, oh. Like. oh, yeah, they're just telling me to keep going, you know, uh, every time I'm on the court, you know, they just tell me to play free and do what I do. So just being able to, you know, have that support and, uh, you know, confidence from those guys, you know, is a plus for me. So just, it just, you know, tells me to just go out and play my game and be free. Uh, Jerry? Hey, Talon Strada, is there anything that you can follow from the example of a guy, say, Alex Caruso, where he's trying to get his way through the league, go using the G League as a chance to develop, and then trying to find minutes on a really good team? 
Um, and then seeing the way that he was embraced for doing that, you know, Laker fans uh, really he embraced him. Do you, do you think uh, his journey could be something uh, that you could learn from as you try to make your way through this season? Yeah, you know, everybody's journey is different, but, uh, you know, I just feel like AC is a pretty good, strong, a pretty good one. So just being able to, you know, see him next to me every day, and, uh, you know, it, it gives you a good, you know, measuring stick to see where you're, where you are, you know, individually. So just being able to, you know, have a guy like that and, uh, you know, see the success that he's had, uh, it gives me, you know, confidence in myself that I can do the same thing. Finals, you sat like Symphony well, and you mentioned I had carried over between the bubble and the What did you do that? I don't know if there's a mic over there. What did you do that? What took place in the but uh, obviously Devontae and Costas are two guys that played a lot with last year, especially in South Bay in the bubble. Um, you know, when did you find out that they were hard to go and play tonight? Does that give you sort of a feel for how this season is going to be with perhaps guys in and out? Uh, on, on short notice. Uh, we found we found out kind of you know as we got, as we start coming in for the game. So just being able uh, to kind of get an early sense of how the season might be is you know just kind of it was kind of crazy just seeing the guys who just could be out you know every other night. Uh, but it's just something you got to be prepared for. That's what we you know came into the season uh, you know ready to take on. So you got to be healthy and uh, you know just being able to next man up mentality. Minutes. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the new look Brooklyn Nets? They're going to be exciting. It's going to be fun in the East. KD, Kyrie, big game James. Everyone's going to want to see some issues arise, but these two together will be fun offensively, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really exciting in Brooklyn and in the East with those two players and their dynamic players. The key is going to be, you know, the supporting cast around them, who comes off the bench, how they support those two players. But Make no doubt about it. Those two guys can play, and uh, Brooklyn's going to be in the mix. I know I'm just a pawn uh, fish, but, uh, you know, Steve Nash is first go around, and, and, and you have two Hall of Famers. Yeah, that helps. That helps, right? <laughs> that, that definitely helps. Uh, but, no, I think James is right. Like, the, the guys that are, are surrounding KD and Kyrie, uh, and, and those two guys in particular being guys that everybody wanted to follow. Right, that's where it separates LeBron, separated Michael, separates Magic. Like those great players, that you you lead in a way that everybody doesn't have to like you, but the way you do things, people want to follow you uh, and and win titles. So we'll see if that happens for Brooklyn. Two more preseason games for the Lakers before the regular season starts. Both games will be in Arizona. Taking on Chris Paul and the Suns, Devin Booker. First one is on Wednesday. The preseason finale is on Friday. And then December 22nd, the Lakers' regular season journey begins against the Clippers. KCP scored 16 in the win. He's speaking with Brez in the media. Hey, Kenny. Thanks for joining us. Uh, big night tonight for Taylor Horton Tucker. He's obviously the story of the game. 33 points for him. He now has uh, 52 in two preseason games. What are you seeing from him out there? Uh, nothing but just greatness. Uh, he's been playing like that uh, since the start of training camp in practice. You no, know, just being aggressive, you know, getting downhill, making plays, you know, just being a solid uh, all-around player, you know, and it, it is in the showing that he's putting in work uh, this summer, you know, uh, and Taylor just, man, he, he's amazing, man. He's an amazing young, young kid. Hey Davis, how about you tonight? You got off to a pretty fast start with nine points in that first quarter, hit some threes throughout the game. How are you feeling out there? And do you feel like you'll be able to carry over that momentum into the regular season that you had at the end of last season? Uh, I feel great. You know, uh, my body, it's, 